Welcome back to Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. You know, we have a little section here with some furs from different fur-bearing animals. We also have a mounted bobcat and a raccoon and a beaver. But you know what the Pocono Wildlife Rehabilitation and Education Centers have? They have live animals that they use for education. Once again, here's Kathy and Emily. Our newest education ambassador, which is a whole separate branch of what we do, um, is here, which is a little baby porcupine that we just uh, acquired for use in education. It's captive bred. And you'll get to see how different that is for us. We get to cuddle and, and play with that animal, whereas with a wild animal, we can't do that. This is Poppy. What is the name? Poppy. Poppy. Short for poplar, because they eat poplar. Okay. She's still being fed with a bottle. And I am her mom, and she wants me very close by. And that's how we bond. Oh no. Where do you get a porcupine? She came from a breeder in Tennessee. No an kidding. exceptional breeder. Um, you're going to meet our bobcat later that also came from the same breeder. They breed for zoos mainly. And this will be an educational tool for, they live pretty long too, don't they? They do. Um, what's nice about my, my last porcupine, which was my first one, taught me how to handle porcupines because when we get them in for care, nobody thinks about how hard they are to, like, how do you work with them? Right. I know, sweetheart. <laughs> you know, we don't get to do this with anything else, so it's, it's, right. it's such a joy to get. Yeah, because it's not a wild animal. Yeah. It was bred just but, for you. But she taught, but they teach you how to handle the ones that come in wild. So they taught me, and now I teach at state and federal conferences right. how to work with porcupines. Where are the quills at this point? Are there any? Oh, they're there. Oh, they're just underneath. Yeah. As long as you pet this way, you're okay. But if you scare her, then the quills come I up. I see the little quills back there. They're born with them. So there's no such thing as a breech bird. <laughs> it has to come out the right way. <laughs> yeah, that would be very, very, very bad. They're soft, but yeah. still that would not that would not work well. Oh, that's a cool animal. She is beautiful. Way cool animal. And she's got a soft belly. They got cool noses. They do. How long do you have to milk? Um, bottle feed this one now. She probably could be weaned at this point, but to keep the bond. Yeah. I know, sweetheart, come here. I know. Right near the microphone. Isn't that cool? That is very rough here. Yes, it's it's coarse. Yeah. It's not soft. And ow. Hey, Poppy. Beautiful animal. She really is. Now Jasper is what? Jasper is our bobcat. Okay. Now this was a bobcat raised for you? Yes. So he came um, from, oh, he's down by the door. He came from Tennessee. Uh, he was born into captivity for education. Okay. Uh, we got him when he was just a little kitten and he's been raised here. He is going to stay here uh, for his whole life and be used for educational programs. Hi, Jasper. Don't jump on him, buddy. Now, Jasper, in, in all intent and purposes, is still a wild animal? Yes, or is he's it, it, absolutely still a wild animal, but he was bred um, domestically. We treat him like a wild animal. He has all the strength and instincts of a wild animal, but he's also a little friendlier. He was bred to be used for education. And Jasper's how old? He is one year and two months. He just turned a year old in April. Wow. Beautiful cat. Yeah, you can I tell mean. he is. Um, he was bred in captivity. He had captive parents, captive grandparents, so he's not afraid of people and he's very curious, unlike a wild bobcat. So when you use them for education, I mean, do you take them out and, out um, and no, about? No, we, we have him in a, um, a carrier. He has a, a cage carrier for education that he lives in um, when he's out at programs. And then this is his home currently in here. Um, we try to give him about a half an hour to an hour of interaction and play time a day to get rid of some of that kitten energy and make sure that he stays friendly. He is not declawed, he is not defanged. Um, that was a choice that I made, um, but I wanted him to be able to have that um, declawing. Uh, they, a lot of vets won't even do it now because it's become so inhumane, they remove part of the toe right. to do it. Right. So we left him keep his, um, <laughs> 
We let him keep, don't fuck his ear. We let him keep his claws, um, but we trained him from the time he was very little, so now he has to be good for voluntary nail trims. Right. So we actually have him trained that when I say foot and um, I want to work with his feet, he can let me work with his feet without biting so that we can trim his nails, do a, a thorough check on his feet, ears, teeth. That's an awesome cat. So That's he's, a... yeah, he's great. We're currently, um, we were doing a fundraiser recently. We're raising some money to build him an enclosure of his own. Don't you jump. That's a beautiful animal. Thank you, Emily. This yeah. is a, a, a great new find for your place. And oh, he's, yeah, course. he is absolutely wonderful. But yeah, what I was saying is um, the number one question we get about him at programs is just from people not realizing that bobcats are native and have a population in Pennsylvania. Don't you jump. And who is this? Tell me what this is. This is name. Wallace. Okay. Um, Wallace came to us when he was still a juvenile. Okay. Um, he. There are rabies vector animals in Pennsylvania, but they are still legal with the correct permits to breed and have as captive pets. They don't make good pets because they're very destructive and they have a lot of energy. Their natural instinct is to rip things apart, touch everything, get into whatever they can. He came to us when he was still young. He was in downtown Bethlehem, found chasing people around. Luckily, people did the right thing. No one touched him. They called one of our capture transport volunteers who, like me, is rabies vaccinated. Um, she went and picked him up. And he has been with us now for about two years. And that's, we use him to show people. Um, that when you don't end up having a, a proper situation where you can have a wild pet like this, right. um, and you get it over your head, what people tend to do, since it's not legal to get rid of them, is just dump them outside. Right. And obviously this is not like a wild raccoon. Right, right. Um, a wild raccoon, touching them like this, you would end up being bitten, scratched immediately. Um, or catching illnesses. Right. So Wallace is, he's neutered, he's fully vaccinated, he's a pet. It's very clear to remember that they are professionals and like that, like she said with that raccoon, they may look funny and cuddly, but they're very destructive and they do carry diseases. So don't think that you can do that. So we are indeed gonna take a short break, but before we do, that's how you could get in touch with the Pocono Wildlife Rehabilitation and Education Center. <laughs> 